Wapin a Flapper, by Yume and AI Note. This story was written with AI. Generally, I write my stories from scratch or only use AI to play with ideas. But this one was fun enough to share with only minor tweaks. This story and character are open source if you want to play with them or make your own story. If you want to see my prompts, follow me on DeviantArt and Patreon for links to text versions of my stories. Chapter 1 The City and the Farm The sun was setting over the city, casting a warm glow on the bustling streets below. Among the crowd of people rushing to their destinations, a young woman stood out like a bright star in the night sky. Her name was Molly, and she was a flapper girl. With her bobbed hair, red lipstick, and short fringed dress, she was the epitome of the modern woman. She was a wild child, a rebel, and she loved nothing more than dancing the night away in the city's most popular speakeasies. As she made her way to her favorite club, Molly couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement bubbling up inside her. The city was alive with energy, and she was ready to embrace it. Hey, Molly, a voice called out from behind her. She turned to see her friend, a fellow flapper named Clara, hurrying to catch up with her. Clara gave Molly a playful nudge. You're looking mighty fine tonight. Molly grinned, her eyes sparkling with mischief. Well, you know me. I always like to make a statement. The two girls laughed and made their way to the club, where they danced the night away to the smooth sounds of jazz. As the night wore on, Molly lost herself in the music and the energy of the crowd. She flirted with handsome men and teased her friends, never once thinking about the consequences of her actions. Finally, when the sun began to rise over the city, Molly knew it was time to go home. She bid farewell to Clara and made her way to the train station, where she caught the first train back to her parents' farm. When she arrived at the farm, she was greeted by her father, a stern, bearded man with a furrowed brow. Where have you been? Molly shrugged, rolling her eyes flippantly. Out dancing, of course. Her father's face turned red as a beat. Enough is enough, he said, his voice shaky. You've been running wild for too long and it's time you learned a lesson. I'm going to give you a lickin'. Chapter 2 a lesson in respect. Molly's father took her by the wrist, his grip firm but not painful. He led her to the couch, where he sat down and, without a word, took Molly across his knee. She was in disbelief. Surely, this couldn't be happening, but it was. Her father began to spank her, and Molly was shocked into silence. She still couldn't believe this was happening to her. Finally, she begged her mother to help, but her mother only stood there nodding in approval. You've had this coming to you, Molly. Her mother said, her voice calm and collected. You've been getting too big for your britches, plain and simple. Molly felt her temper rise, her face flushing red to match her hot seat. Horse apples. I'm too old to be spanked. I'm 18 years old, I'm a modern woman, I can vote, and I can go out hoofing anytime I want. You're just jealous to be stuck at home with pops like a couple flat tires. But her words only seemed to make her father more determined. Pops landed a ferocious pop on Molly's seat to shut her trap. Then, he stood her up and looked her straight in the eyes. You're never too old to learn respect, Molly. And you will learn it, one way or another. Molly smirked, thinking her spanking was over. Well, I've learned my lesson. Anyway, I'm heading to the juice joint. Want me to bring you back some, hooch? Unfortunately for Molly, her father was not done with her yet. He lifted her skirt and pulled down her knickers in a single yank. Strike two. We're going to start this spanking over from the beginning. This time, you will learn to never dishonor your mother. Molly's complaints died on her lips as she was forced over her father's knee once again, as easily as a rag doll. Her bottom, once her pride and joy, now on shameful display. The lesson in respect had only just begun. Chapter 3. A Lesson in Modesty Molly's cries echoed through the house, as her father's calloused hand met her bare bottom, the pain searing through her body. She had never felt such a stinging sensation before, and she realized how much more vulnerable she was without the protection of her clothing. Please, Daddy, she begged, her voice wavering with a mix of pain and desperation. I'll do more chores. I'll never be disrespectful again. Please, just stop. Her father paused for a moment, 
his hand resting on her reddened bottom. Molly, I know you're going to be a good girl from now on because I'm going to spank you each and every time you behave like a flapper. Now apologize to your mother, and then I'ma finish paddling you. Molly's heart sank. She couldn't imagine enduring this kind of punishment on a regular basis. She looked to her mother, tears streaming down her face. Mommy, please ask him to stop. I'm sorry, I really am. But her mother shook her head, her expression unyielding. It's too late for apologies, Molly. You brought this on yourself. As she heard her mother's words, Molly felt a sense of foreboding doom, like a thundercloud come crashing down on her. The cloud seemed to dispel, as Molly's father resumed the spanking, his hand coming down hard on her tender bottom. Molly cried out, her body writhing in pain, but there was no escape. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, her father stopped. Molly lay over his knee, her breath coming in ragged gasps, as she tried to recover from the ordeal. She looked up at her father, her eyes filled with tears. Is it over? She whispered. Her father shook his head. No, Molly. It ain't near over. Not yet anyway. That all depends. Molly grit her teeth, her eyes flashing. Depends on what? Pops landed a firm swat to reward Molly's disrespectful tone. Depends on you minding your tongue for one. Now, get out of that feathery, fool outfit and stand in the corner while I talk to your ma. Molly scrambled forward off her father's lap to escape further swats and quickly undressed. Just as she bent to pull up her knickers from her ankles, she heard her mother's voice snap from behind her. No, Molly. Keep those drawers down. You like showing off your legs and fanny so much around town? Fine. You can show them off while you stand in the corner. Pulling her knickers back up anyway, Molly turned around to argue, but one look from Pa made her shut her mouth with a snap. Pa rested his hand on his belt. You heard your ma, little missy. Yes, Pa, squeaked Molly, her voice cracking to resemble a mouse. Refusing to surrender completely, Molly lowered the knickers to just below her bottom, keeping the fabric pressed tight between her thighs to hold them up, and shimmied into the corner. She felt her parents' eyes on the back of her head and turned to look, wondering if she'd just earned a third spanking for not stripping entirely. She followed Pa's eyes as he inspected her work, then he nodded. That's better. Now, put your hands behind your head, your nose gin the wall, and not a peep out of you. Molly obeyed, her hands trembling, her knees knocking, and her lip quivering. She dreaded what would happen when she was free from this corner. She wondered if she would ever be free again. To be continued. Spanks for listening. If you like my spanking stories, you can follow me on Patreon, DeviantArt, BitChute, Odyssey, and Twitter. You may spank it, once.